Hello again and welcome back. With Premier League teams involved in European competition entering the League Cup this week, there's no better time to put the spotlight on this much maligned tournament, whilst also we'll have a look at one of its most eminent debutants over the past 30 years. Now, in the past, big clubs have been accused of not taking it seriously, and although when looking at the past winners, this doesn't seem particularly accurate, in reality, when you delve a little bit deeper, this is almost certainly the case. Um, the, the competition has undergone significant restructuring over the last 25 years, such that two-legged ties were stopped in 2001 and replays were completely abolished to lighten the fixture load. However, the issues of top teams playing weakened sides has persisted to this very day and to be honest, it's, it's probably been normalised now to the extent that nobody really bats much of an eyelid when a Premier League team names a pretty understrength lineup. However, if we cast our mind back to the 1994-1995 edition of the tournament, the expectation of Port Vale fans when they drew the reigning champions Manchester United, the reigning Premier League champions, was that the Red Devils megastars such as Peter Schmeichel, Paul Lintz, Eric Cantona and Mark Hughes would be gracing Vale Park with their esteemed presence. The programme says as much and we can see actually with the team that's predicted. I mean, Schmeichel, Ince, Kanchelskis, Cantona, McClare, Giggs. So when the 18,605 strong crowd turned up for the biggest match in Port Vale's history, they were, they were shocked and dismayed to see that none of the players mentioned played that night. Despite Manchester United emerging as 2-1 winners, the Port Vale fans were so incensed by Alex Ferguson's perceived disrespect for the competition and also for themselves that a local MP complained to the House of Commons on behalf of his constituents threatening to take action against Ferguson and Manchester United under the Trade Descriptions Act. Order. Reviewing the starting lineup though, it's it's understandable why Ferguson incurred the wrath of the Valiant's faithful. It's true that more established names such as Brian McClare and Roy Keane featured, but of the other man of the other eleven Manchester United players that featured that night, Seven had played in 1992's FA Youth Cup final. Very, very little known players featured that night. Players such as Nicky Butt, Gary Neville, a 19 year old right winger making his full i.e. starting debut, David Beckham. And also a local lad making his first ever appearance in the first team. A local lad who scored both of Manchester United's goal that night. A 19 year old, Paul Scholes. This sticker is one that I always find quite interesting actually, um, because it's from a Manchester United only set um, released by Panini for the 2006-2007 season. And each squad member has a sticker from their debut um, for the Manchester United team, which I think is pretty cool. This is also a ticket from that night that I enjoy very much indeed. This one graded a PSA 2 and you can actually see that some of the one of the counter foils is still attached and it is not full though because actually you can see here that the stadium is unfortunately chopped off so one of them's removed and that's probably a concession or something like that and this just to close my comments on the League Cup before we move on to Skulls. This is, this is why I like the League Cup. And this is one of the reasons why I will always take great interest in, in the League Cup. 
In addition to Scholes, um, David Beckham obviously made his debut in the League Cup against Brighton. We saw this one in the Beckham episode. And also other legend, absolute legends have made their debut in, in this competition. Um, players such as John Terry, who made his debut as a 19-year-old, 18-year-old maybe, um, in a third round tie when it was the Worthington Cup. It was, actually, it was actually really mean what they used to say about the League Cup. When it was sponsored by Worthington, they used to, people used to call it the Worthless Cup. <laughs> which is uh, quite mean. John Terry, Ashley Cole made his debut for Arsenal, his professional debut in a League Cup tie against Middlesbrough. Paul Pogba. I won't speak too much about Paul. It's a positive channel. Gerard Piquet. And also a former European golden boy Cesc Fabregas made his debut for Arsenal against Rotherham when it was known as the Carling Cup. So this is a this is a competition that although it is slightly disregarded, it has a considerable degree of heritage and some absolutely huge players have made their senior level bow in this competition. This has even continued on to this very day. Um, players like Jude Bellingham and Harvey Elliott made their first appearances for um, their senior teams in the League Cup. So I will always love the League Cup. <laughs> As for Skulls, well, what, what more can be said about him? We've seen it from Zendine Zidane, the greatest midfielder of his generation, according to him. A few days after his debut against Port Vale, he made his Premier League debut against Ipswich, where he emerged from the bench to score a goal in a 3-2 defeat for Manchester United, actually, that day. United would go on to exact revenge on Ipswich in the first fixture that year, winning 9-0. And his only issue that I know about from that season is his Merlin 1995 sticker. His Merlin 95 sticker, which shows a classic portrait shot of skulls. Again, we've seen these stickers quite frequently from Premier League players of that era. Who was the first one million goalkeeper? Answers on the bottom. Stick it in the comments if you know. But I, I enjoy this because Skulls always, Skulls has always been as associated with like a lack of flair. But he's actually, he's wearing a bit of bling in this. He's got a nice gold chain on, which is very un Skulls. Quite a nice sticker. And then what, although researching items, it's, it's a hobby, uh, researching items is, it's never a chore. But what, what I do like is that if there's a, a group of players that you enjoy or, or teammates, for instance, then if one of the players, say you like early England David Beckham, then you can have a look at sort of teammates and things. And lo and behold, Skulls features in those sets. So Upper Deck... 97, Skulls has a card, one of the checklist cards. And then for Merlin's England 98, he's also got another one. We saw that. As for more unique Skulls cards that I enjoy, um, I actually really enjoy some of the Futera, Futera inserts from the late 1990s. Again, other gigs, Beckham, those other huge stars from Manchester United in that era, they're also in those sets, but the Skulls ones I've chosen to focus on here and this one. This is a France 98 special insert from a licensed Manchester United Futura set from that era. You can see it has a really nice effect. This one's numbered to 8,000. Pop those up here so we can have them all on display. I'm making a little smorgasbord of skulls. One from a year or two later, an electric. This one I, I think has such potential, but for some reason it just doesn't really work. I, 
I guess maybe Futera are working with a bit less of a budget, but just imagine if that had like that sort of velocity strobing on the electric. That would be an amazing card. And you can you can really see the sort of origins of some of the more modern flamboyant inserts you see from these Futera cards, which I really like. And then my favourite Skulls Futera card is his Red Hot which I love this one because it's got a really great flame effect that I hope the camera shows up, but it looks brilliant. And it's just that Manchester United kit. This is from the 1997, 1998 season. And it's just brilliant. I mean, it just, it just matches his flame red hair. It's just such a great card. And I really like that. And as I said, if you like any of his other any of his other teammates, then quite a few of them feature in that insert set. The card's seen in more early career skulls, but one of the most incredible qualities of him was his sheer longevity. Almost 20 years he spent in the Manchester United first team squad. I mean, on a personal level, taking me from barely being toilet trained right, right up until basically the end of med school. He spent the first decade of his career playing as a central midfielder in sort of classic, uh, Ferguson's classic 4-4-2, except for a slightly ill-fated spell to accommodate the signing of Veron um, when he tried to make Scholes into a number 10. But Scholes was an absolutely lethal goal-scoring central midfield threat. That's something which isn't always immediately in my mind when I think of Scholes, but between 1997 and 2005, Scholes scored... 100 goals in all competitions for Manchester United, um, including two Premier League hat-tricks. One against Newcastle. This one was absolutely brilliant game. We were going to Tuscany that evening. Watched the early kick-off on television. And then a few years before, against West Ham in a thumping 7-1 win. But as Scholes' career progressed, his goal-scoring output declined and his role in the team changed. I would, I would stop short of calling it a natural evolution, though. Um, it's true that age and father time would have played some role in this transition, but usually such changes are gradual. And not, not always as remembered now is that in the last few days of 2005, when playing against... It had been rumbling on, apparently, for a few weeks before... But Skulls had a really acute visual um, issue that was noted while he was playing away against Birmingham. Um, and he couldn't, he couldn't see out of one of his eyes, basically. He could, he could barely see. And there was really some quite large concern for Skulls at the time. And it took a bit of time to find out exactly what was wrong. He had a problem with one of the blood vessels in his eye doesn't say exactly what was wrong, but it says that it was it was blocked, and um, it's not it's not a medical lecture, but it, he was ad he was advised to take some time out, and he spent six months away from the Manchester United first team, resting and recuperating. Um, the Manchester United sort of invested in some state of the art eye reactor machines uh, for skulls to help keep sharp at Carrington, and at the time in that first six months of two thousand and six. Manchester United were beginning to evolve and there was thoughts that Scholes would never really play again. But he returned for the beginning of the 2006-2007 season, being named in the starting lineup for the first Premier League match against Fulham. And really, it was as if he'd never been away. This is a sticker from the set mentioned earlier. This is for the 2006-2007 season. Nice foil facsimile auto. It was as if he'd never been away and he was playing some of the best football of his life. He was a lot less of the sort of crash bang wallop central midfielder that we'd seen in the first decade of his career. But in so many ways, he was better. He, there was no one better at controlling the tempo of a match than Scholes. He knew exactly when to speed up the play, when to slow it down. And that's, that's not to say that all of the sort of crash moments, the, the stunning volleys were all gone. Just that season, he scored a spectacular goal 
from a corner kick assist, a volley from the outside of the area against Aston Villa, which echoed his one of his most famous goals, which was a very, very similar goal against Bradford City. And again from a corner where he just volleyed it first time, which is an incredible goal. And very, very few players can pull off that sort of technique. The following season was also his most famous, probably his most famous goal for Manchester United and definitely my, my favourite goal, which was his incredible half volley against Barcelona, which was the only goal in a tense and just knife edge 180 minutes of Champions League semi-final football that sent Manchester United on their way to Moscow. This His goal was early on in the second leg and then United held out against Barcelona and Lionel Messi to go to Moscow where they'd win the Champions League that that year. Now, tackling wasn't Paul Scholes' strongest suit, as we as many of us know. And you could make a really good... Comp- there probably are some compilations of mistimed Paul Scholes tackles um, on YouTube. He received 97 yellow cards in the Premier League alone. But it's a it's actually it's a myth, and I hope people don't say that Scholes couldn't defend. Now, tackling is a component of defending, but Scholes was so competent in the art of positional defending. He he read the game so well with interceptions and just, just could know where the ball would be very often. And he wouldn't have been able to operate in a central midfield too for so long if he couldn't defend. He is a a true Manchester United legend. He is one of the greatest midfielders in his generation. He retired from professional football for the first time in 2011 following the 3-1 Champions League final defeat against Barcelona at Wembley. But eight months later, this, this was a very interesting... Thing. He, he came out of retirement and this did have absolutely sort of no whispers in the press, nothing like that, for an FA Cup third round tie against Manchester City, which Man United won 3-2. Um, obviously would miss out on the title to City that year, thanks to Aguero. But he would go on to play the whole of the next season as well. And he would pick up his 11th Premier League winner's medal at the end of that season, which is a truly astonishing number, um, bettered only by his longtime teammate Ryan Giggs. He announced his retirement at the end of that season, making his final appearance in that bonkers 5 all draw against West Brom at the Hawthorns, which also was Sir Alex Ferguson's last Manchester United match as well. So there you go. That's a bit of the League Cup, a bit of Paul Scholes. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me, tell me if you like Paul Scholes. I do. <laughs> and tell me if you uh, like the League Cup. Do you want it abolished? There are some people that do want it abolished. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Put your comments down below. But if you've enjoyed it, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. But for now, bye-bye. And next episode, we're going to continue on with our Premier League look, 94-95. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>